So I've been using Reason as one of the doors that I work in for a pretty long time now, probably since version one, to be honest with you. And I guess you could say I'm a veteran user. Ever since the introduction of the M-Class processors, I'm happy to say that I've been able to finish off a client's work to a pretty good standard as a master right within Reason without moving into another door or use any third-party plugins or hardware, etc. So it's always been a nice addition to have that mastering option right within Reason. I've always felt, though, that it would be nice to have some other options at least and maybe some other tools that we're used to outside the world of Reason available. So when rack extensions came in and we saw the Ozone Maximizer come into place, it was really excellent because it gives us another choice of limiting at the end of our mastering chain apart from the M-Class Maximizer. And as we've looked with the Fordyne and the Decam Bus Comp, we're starting to see some really great mastering tools come into Reason and these really bring it up in levels of quality to what we see outside of Reason. I think that with the Ozo Maximizer, you're probably going to start thinking about replacing the Maximizer in the M-Class series again. <laughs> Sorry, guys, we're going to close that off and I've bypassed it. So I'm just going to start in the next video, at least, to pass some audio through it and show you what sort of volumes we can create. But before we do that, let's take a look at the interface. So we've got a mode here, and really this is just sort of, you know, your overall mode and sound of the limiter itself. We've got IRC and IRC2. We've got hard and soft. Best thing to do with these is really experiment with your material. Um, I often just leave it in the default mode. Uh, but obviously, if you want a soft mode for some something specific, maybe if you're working with organic, you know, um, acoustic material, you might want a soft, soft, overall soft sound. And then hard, um, you might want to do that with something a bit more aggressive. But I would literally just experiment with these and see which one works best for you. After that, we've got threshold. Obviously, you're going to bring this down until you start seeing gain reduction in this meter here. And, you know, that's going to increase your perceived volume and reduce your dynamic range. We know that limiters are from hell, of course. <laughs> they reduce and squash your peaks. That's what the Ozo Maximizer does. That's what it's here for. But you can do it responsibly. Um, you can do it with a bit of control and therefore limit, excuse the pun, the amount of damage that you do to your original mix. So we've got a speed control, which is, I guess, going to be attack and release combined. And then we've got a margin control, which is quite cool. It's like really easy to fine tune it. You know, a lot of the time these meters like just move massive amounts, but we can get a minus one out of it quite easily, especially if you hold down shift. You can get minus one, minus two really easily. What this means is that you're not hitting zero dB when you apply your limiting. We've got different modes here. We've got links, linked modes and fully unlinked between your left and right sides. I tend to leave it in linked mode. Inter sample limit is really useful because a lot of the time when you're compressing, even if it says it's not hitting zero dB with your margin, some of your inter sample peaks may be hitting 0 dB or indeed clipping. And this is really useful if you're going to go on to MP3. If you've avoided into sample clipping at this point, it's likely you'll avoid it when you're compressed to MP3. On top of that, we've got dithering. So we've got dither amount from none to high. We've got a noise shaping mode it's from light, moderate, medium, high and ultra. So this is the noise shaping that is used to create the dithering. And this is if you're moving from 24 to 16 bit or lower, I guess, if you want to master at 8 bit. I've never, never <laughs> felt the need to do that myself, but there might be reasons for it if you're mastering for, you know, mobile games or something. I don't know. So let's say you're at 24 bit and you want to move to 16 bit. There is dithering within reason, but I would probably go with the ozone dithering. At least you've got a bit more control here. We can auto blank. We can limit peaks again, which is very useful. So if you've got into sample limiting on, you've got a nice margin and you limit your peaks during dithering, you know, it's going to be very nice. I think I think you're going to avoid any problems. Harmonic suppression and filter DC, which your DC offset. So if you've got any DC offset in there or problems inherently in your audio, this should get rid of them at least it'll help to get rid of them. So lots of options there in the dithering. If you don't need it, just leave it disengaged. And then you can just concentrate on this black section here for all your limiting settings. Now we've gone through the settings. Let's have a quick look at the back panel, by the way, just input and output, dead simple. You know, nothing to worry about there. Once you've got all your settings correct, you're pretty much good to go. That's the end of your mastering chain. But now we understand them. I'm going to put some audio through the Ozone Maximizer and let's see if we can make our ears bleed. No, I'm just joking. We're just going to try and up the level slightly and have a nice, sensible master. Okay. <laughs> 